ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Michael Anderson Show. It's your host with the most. It's the Michael Anderson Show 2.0. This is my first official actual talking video. I do want to say welcome back to the very few subscribers that I now have, and we're going to be starting fresh. I'm going to try to get a video every day. By the way, I will be exposing an insanely huge, huge homeless camp that is growing in my city, that the city's doing nothing about. I'll be sending a video to the mayor. It's absolutely colossal. And don't forget, no more swearing, no language. Let's try to keep it, uh, I'm going to try to keep it polite in all of my videos, all right? So here's the deal, all right? I want to talk about something. And this is about a Democrat in New York. His name is Eric Schneiderman. And the reason I want to talk about this is because I believe that this Democrat's mentality is sort of, I believe it is the true thought patterns and the true ideals and the true behavior of these people that are obsessed over race, identity, and, uh, and things of that nature and ethnicity and all that stuff. This is really how they think, okay? And, and here's the thing. I'm going to break it down for you. So I don't know a whole lot about this guy. I know his name is Eric Schneiderman. And he is definitely a horrible human being. I believe the woman that told the story about abuse. I don't remember her name. I was reading the story on Fox. And I also read it in the New York Times. <clears throat> And she said that she started dating Eric Schneiderman for, uh, she was with him for about a year until a friend helped her leave. And that Eric Schneiderman would get in these booze and, and the relationship first was really, really amazing and interesting and then slowly became very, very abusive. And that he would call her, he would call her his brown slave and that he would also uh, make her call him his master. Which, again, if you're in the bedroom and this is just about sex, that, that's one thing. Some girls are into that where... But this was against her will in some ways. He would slap her. He would hit her uh, to the point where it became extremely painful, choking her when she didn't want it. Not Again, not consensual. He would view her uh, not consensual at all. There's some girls that like to be slapped a little, choked a little, called a couple of dirty words. That's their thing. That's kinky to them. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. I think th this man was a huge figure in the Me Too movement, okay? That is, have you guys noticed that the people that are figureheads in this Me Too movement tend to be some uh, culprits of the worst kind? Culprits of people who have committed some of the worst abuses against women, uh, the worst abuses, and, and, and actually have some of the most kind of like hate-filled mentalities but they obsess. They obsess over what you think. They obsess over calling you a racist, over calling you a sexist. And the reason they obsess over it, I'm starting to notice this. I think it's because that's what they are. That's what they are, okay? And th because that's what they are, that's how they view you, okay? There, it, there's actually a type that's actually in psychology. It's called projection, okay? They are projecting their thoughts onto other people, okay? So this man, and again, I want to be very clear on this. This man abused this woman. She did not want to be called these things. She accepted out of uh, his, he had power over her. There is a difference. I, I'm not like one of those guys. There, There is a lot of women that should just leave relationships. In fact, this woman was talked into leaving this relationship by a friend of hers. He would drink, get drunk, he would abuse her. He would hit her. Apparently, uh, reportedly, he hit this woman so hard. There's other women. This isn't just like uh, being a pervert. We're talking about a man who is physically abusing women. That's a lot different of an accusation. And because this accu accusation is coming against someone who is very high up in the Me Too movement, I have a good feeling that this is not a political hit job in any way from Republicans at all. OK, <clears throat> or Democrats, by that matter. I, I, I wouldn't put put it past Democrats to screw over their own uh, competing Democrats. I wouldn't put it past them. OK, they're probably one of the low down, dirtiest parties that there are. I really do believe that. Um, but I think that this man, this man was obsessed about saying that Trump was a villain. Trump was a bad guy. Trump was a piece of hit say, OK, or you, you know the word, all right? Because I can't, I'm not going to be swearing no more, okay? Um, 
I, I don't I don't understand. This is a man who is obsessed with calling everyone else a sexist. Everyone else is a racist. Yet, deep down inside, his own thoughts were of the very kind he accused everyone else of having. That's called projection. It's like someone who obsesses over thinking that everyone around them is a pervert. Everyone's perverted, right? Everyone is. Do you know why a lot of people think that? Because they themselves are perver perverted, and so they project that onto other people. You you take it. It's it's called a point of reference for reality. Okay. So for example, I can I have a tendency to be a little judgmental sometimes. I I, I can admit that I can be a little judgmental, and I can be a jerk. And I would say I, I'm not going to say a I would say a butthole because I'm trying I'm trying not to swear. So we're going to say butthole. Okay. I can have, I have the tendency to be a real mother fudge, or fudge, like fudge, fudger, okay? I have a tendency to be like that, all right? And the reason I have a tendency to be like that is mostly because of my life experiences, okay? It, it's one of the few ways that I've, uh, the few coping mechanisms that I've used to get ahead in the world, okay? And it, it again, being a jerk is not help you. I, I'm not going to get on what helps you get ahead, but I do, can be a jerk to people who get in my way and I can step on people who I believe are slowing me down or inconveniencing me. If, if I believe it can get me somewhere, I'm trying to go faster or with greater ease. Okay. And it's something I'm actually working on. All right. Um, <clears throat> here's the thing. I have a tendency to view other people in the same way. I often think that other people are being judgmental when they're not. I often think other people are being jerks when they're not. Uh, when I'm in a bad mood, I think other people, like if you are in one of those moods where you just want to fight somebody, even if you're not going to, and someone looks at you and you're like, oh, this guy wants to fight me. This guy's also angry. You're projecting your emotions onto others. And that's why I believe, and this is a clear indicator, this Eric Schneiderman, I'll put a link in the description below, that this man is portrays the exact mentality of everybody that is obsessing over race today because they themselves obsess over race. They themselves are in fact racist. They themselves are the type of people that get nervous around, uh, you know, someone who might be a person of say color or whatever. They themselves get nervous around that. They do. If they're in the hood, they, they get nervous about that, which by the way, there's no reason you shouldn't get nervous in the hood. And I'm sorry, if you're in the hood, you know, it's okay to be nervous. That'd probably be the smart thing to do. Okay. But you get my point. They're projecting their inner thoughts their inner desires onto other people. And that is why they call everyone a racist, everyone a sexist, everyone a homophobe, blah, blah, blah. Because they obsess over those groups of people. They obsess over it. That's all they think about. So they think that's what everyone else thinks. They're racist. So they call everyone else a racist. Okay? They're not deflecting. They're not deflecting. They're projecting. This man, on the other hand, I believe he was not only projecting, but also deflecting. And also it was a way for him to get ahead in the world by t calling everyone a racist, getting high up in the so-called Me Too movement, insulting Trump, calling him a sexist, so on and so forth. He is projecting his inner thoughts. He is deflecting criticism of him and the kind of person he is. Okay. And he himself is in fact a racist, sexist horrible person. The things he said to this woman, I got to be honest with you. I, I don't know if I would feel comfortable, uh, having, I mean, who would want to call someone their brown slave? That sounds so bizarre, so strange, not really a sexual thing. That, that, that's, that's more of a, and there's nothing wrong with being a uh, dominant in bed. Nothing wrong with that. That's totally fine. But being demeaning, like really demeaning, do you know what I'm saying? Really demeaning. This guy's a control power freak. He's a weirdo, okay? But again, key indicator here. This is how the far left and the people who obsess over race, identity, and all that stuff actually think. Link in the description below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click that notification button because as you know, YouTube censors people like me Okay, and in order for you to get a notification that I have uploaded a new video, you gotta click that notification button. 
Okay? Anyways, you guys, Michael Anderson, your host with the most, the Michael Anderson Show 2.0. I will talk at you later. I am going into a crazy-ass homeless camp this week. Okay? This week. So be prepared. It's insane. I'm bringing my good camera for this one, okay? You guys have a great day. I'll talk at you later. Bye.